Hi everyone. <laughs> Just wait a couple more minutes to see if more people want to come online, I guess. <laughs> Hi Mary. <laughs> So I'm a bit nervous because I've never done this before. <laughs> I actually had to watch YouTube to figure out how to do a live thing on uh, Instagram. <laughs> I was more worried about that than uh, uh, than taking you around um, my organized chaos of a studio. Um, right now, I was um, I was taping some plaster pieces together. I had. Um, I originally poured one to show you guys uh, the latest thing that I was working on, um, but I managed to break it <laughs> because um, when clay is dry uh, but not fired, it's at its most vulnerable, fragile state. So um, if you have to run, you have to run. Um, I uh, There will be a link on the Arts Etobicoke um, website uh, afterwards. So. If you can't be live, then that's perfectly fine. <laughs> anyway, my name is Sasha Bateman, and um, let me just see here. I'm gonna give it another minute or two because it's not quite, quite two o'clock. But what I was trying to do is, I've now been working with plaster. Plaster can be um, a potter's best friend and worst enemy, um, but I have tried, I'm trying to work with plaster in a different way. So what I did was I just took um, uh, a cheap dollar store, you know, the little tin, t um, uh, disposable tin can, th uh, tin things that you can put little loaves in and whatnot. And um, I hacked it up with a saw and then started uh, carving out uh, little holes and whatnot. And then I pour um, uh, liquid clay called casting slip um, into here. And then all the gaps that you see here um, is where the clay would go. So I'll show you the broken piece. So even though it's broken, you can kind of see that um, the clay goes in between all those little grooves and whatnot, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. But I'm looking for a more exaggerated, um, more exaggerate, more exaggeration with these spikes and and, and spine things. Um, but that's what I'm playing with. So, um, given that there are no deadlines for shows this summer, um, I've given myself a lot of permission to just play and. Um, try some wacky new stuff um, just for the hell of it and hopefully in inspire some new work. Um, so um, I don't know where to start. So my name is Sasha Bateman. Um, I uh, recently graduated from Sheridan College in their ceramics program back in 2018. Um, my class was the first of the four-year degree program. It used to be a three-year uh, certificate program. And um, I think that's both a good and bad thing um, because there were a lot of um, women in particular um, coming out of that program around my vintage uh, looking for, you know, something to do, uh, you know, later on in life. Um, but now that it's a degree program, um, which is quite a commitment uh, financially as well as time-wise, I don't think they're going to uh, see a lot of, <laughs> I think they're gonna see a lot of more 18 year olds coming right out of high school, which is fine. Um, so I'm glad I very, I'm very glad that I took it and um, uh, I highly recommend stopping by there um, to see their facilities because that's what I fell in love with when I first went there. So, um, so this is my studio. Uh, I'm in the upper level of our home. Uh, we are very, I find myself very fortunate because we were in a condominium downtown before this and um, on the 60th floor. And I had just, um, one time it took me 27 minutes to get down to take my dog for a walk. So I decided if I'm gonna have a heart attack or something, I need to be on ground level where people can save me. Um, so we moved into this gorgeous house in Mimico and uh, we absolutely love it. We're uh, pretty close to the lake and um, 
and I have a beautiful space um, uh, compared to a lot of other people who uh, get to work from home. So um, I'm going to flip it around here and how do I flip it around? <laughs> okay, so um, as you can see my YouTube with the <laughs> instructions on how to get on here this is my grandmother um i don't know if you can see it or not but um when my mother went to university in regina she actually didn't know it but um one of her teachers was uh, what's his name uh gil Hooley, who was um a big uh proponent of the uh, of the funk movement uh in ceramics and so she got uh, my grandmother and my grandparents into it. My grandfather was amazing because he built his own kiln and made his own glazes from rocks that he would pick and grind down and that kind of thing. And so ceramics have always been in my life. And um, uh, yeah, that was my beginning. Um, you can see I've got two beautiful windows here that give me a lot of uh, natural light. And uh, a couple over here as well, um, that I do have a nice view of the lake, uh, but my windows are not so good. And I also have a nice balcony out there that in the summertime, I, um, I let my pieces dry out there. <clears throat> so here's a couple of examples of my work. Um, this one is going to be refired. You can see the bright blue tips. I. Um, uh, I repainted them, so I'm gonna. One of the great things about ceramics is that you can fire it again if you're not happy with it. And here are some larger versions that I did recently, uh, for specifically for the Gladstone come up to my room um, show that was in January. Uh, what else do I have here? So I was doing a lot of carving and I used a lot of stencils, so a lot of. Um, tracing paper. I'm, I'm not much of a drawer. Um, so uh, <laughs> what you can't do, you steal <laughs> or make it on, and make it your own. So just some fun things. I'm a big fan of beautiful women and even some fun ones like these, like this pinup girl here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but those are nice for platters and whatnot. Um, I also collect uh, textured things a lot. So some expensive paper from Michaels. Um, I haven't had the heart to actually use it yet because they were pretty expensive. Um, but I do collect things like that. Uh, and then you can see that um, pieces that didn't quite work out end up being um, tool holders a lot of the time. <laughs> and, um, and then I also always have some pieces that got broken. This one actually got broken at the Gladstone. You can see um, potters also reuse uh, things for paints and whatnot. So we're all we're very creative in in ways of finding <laughs> finding things to work with. That uh, you know, there's a fork here and some straws and and whatnot as well. Um, what else? My beautiful studio dog. There's Milo. Sometimes he needs a bit too much attention. Uh, and then I've got kind of these junk drawers um, that I got, you know, just from uh, Walmart or whatever. It houses like feathers, like uh, ribbons and a bunch of junk that I kind of, I tend to accumulate quite a bit of um, just stuff that I think I can use one day. Fishing line, uh, some gold paper, all sorts of junk. Um, this is my casting slip right now. You can see uh, an immersion blender is a great way to stir up um, liquid clay. It doesn't give too much resistance, so um, hopefully that uh, immersion uh, blender will last me a bit. And then this is what I use to pour the, um, the casting slip into that piece that I showed you earlier. Am I going too fast? Am I moving around? I, I know sometimes it's, uh, if people are going too fast with the camera, just let me know and I'll slow down. <laughs> okay, so, so this is going to be my next really ambitious one, um, just like the one that I showed you, this one that I hacked up. 
size wise <laughs> you can see it's going to be quite a bit of work so i've gridded it out and uh, i got a new saw so this is actually a mold that somebody donated to me thank you queenie this is a mold that she used for making plates and i'm going to hack it up and uh, and see what i can make with it and here is my workbench basically so I know it doesn't have a lot of clay on it right now. Um, I've got a bunch of materials down here um, for making glazes and whatnot. Uh, uh, working with pottery is a real um, chemical process. And uh, so you can see I've got some like copper carbonate there, lithium carbonate there. Um, what else do I have? So yeah, um, I, like I said, I've been trying to kind of branch out with my work. So I've been, I again, collect a lot of weird things. Seeds and pods have been a staple in my repertoire of inspiration. And you can see here too that, you know, I've been playing around with wire, whoops, wire and shells and metals and whatnot. Um, and then this is just a plaster um, board that I made to be able to work on because if the if the clay goes through here, I did tape off the bottom. Um, but if it goes through, the the the, um, the plaster actually absorbs the moisture from the clay. Um, what else? So then I've got you know my wire wire uh, tools for playing with my wire. This is a piece I made early on. I was working. <laughs> trying to, um, you know, find my way around uh, a torso and whatnot. And when I was doing this, uh, I said to a gal in my class, what do, you, what do you think of this? And she's like, and she was a deaf gal. She's like, turn it around. The, the other side is <laughs> equally interesting. And so it kind of ended up kind of a yin and yang kind of a piece there. And then uh, just some experiments that I've been playing with, trying to get some different textures and whatnot. Um, back at Christmas, I thought I was going to make a bunch of ornaments and whatnot, but um, I elected not to. Um, you can see I've got boxes and boxes of this stuff. My drive my husband crazy. And then I've got things like fur and, uh, you know, uh, wall, again, with the creativity, <laughs> walnut for making great texture. Uh, and these are just little flakes that I was playing with. The great thing with pottery is that you can, like I said, continuously refire things. So I didn't have anything to put this in. So I just pinched this real quick bowl and uh, fired it together with that. Um, what else? So here is uh, another work table. Uh, this is just a cheap folding table from uh, Canadian Tire for like 50 bucks when it was on sale. Uh, I do have a wheel under here, um, but I don't throw on it too often. Um, I've decided I, I'm not a big fan of mopping the floor every time I do it. So you can see I keep that up here too. Um, but I'm going to haul it outside when the summer, when the weather gets nice enough and, um, and try to throw on that. So I've got a couple boxes of clay here. You can see I'm, I'm also doing some felting stuff. Um, and a friend of mine uh, lent me her triple beam um, scale so I can weigh out my, um, my glaze materials. And uh, again, a bin with just, um, you know, plain newsprint. Uh, I use that quite a bit just to either absorb the moisture or, um, you know, uh, put in between my slabs and whatnot. I use dowels quite a bit as well. So I've got those. Um, what else? I just had a fella come in and uh, put up, you know, this shelf and these things here and whatnot. And then this, this area here so that I could work. And uh, uh, so that's made me look even more um, organized. <laughs> Uh, this is my little library of magazines and books, and um, a lot of it is clay related, but a lot of it's not. Um, so you might see, 
you know, the map is art. Um, uh, what else have we got here? I've got the pinup girl book where I've got that little pinup girl, Matisse, uh, sex bots. That's always a good one. Uh, botany because I love um, seeds and pods and whatnot. And yeah, sometimes I get caught up just, uh, and then all my ceramics monthly collection and clay times and whatnot as well. And these are going to be my next, um, my next project of uh, trying to cast. I'm hoping that I can do, I'm gonna do it totally backwards. So totally not the way I was taught, but I'm gonna try it anyway. <laughs> and um, what else? Oh, and then here's my shelving uh, that contains pretty much all my materials. So uh, over here, I've got a bunch of little stains, colors and whatnot, uh, small portions because they're very expensive. Um, these are actually um, glazed test tiles. So it didn't matter what they looked like um, because I just wanted to know how the, the glazes were coming out. So you can see there's two different glazes here. This one here, the blue, and then this black, but when they come together, they create this real crusty, crusty green stuff, which I love. And then another one here. And then again, key shavings, stuff like that. <laughs> Anything weird that I can think of that might be able to fire. Of course, I've got my trusty face mask because um, clay when it's in the dust form is very hazardous. So we are very all about safety. Um, and a bunch of uh, other, I'm always looking for textures. So I've got tons of like coral and stones and that kind of thing in here. There's like lava rocks and all sorts of stuff in there. Um, what else? A scale to weigh my, to weigh my uh, clay if I'm making um, uh, function wear and uh, like I wanna make my mugs all the same size relatively, then I'll weigh out my, weigh out my uh, clay beforehand. Um, so a whole bunch of sandpaper. Always good for if you've got little sharp ends uh, on the bottom of your piece or something like that. Um, my brand new saw, I'm very happy with it. Uh, so that's what I've been using with my plaster to hack it up. And again, with the, uh, you know, dried dead things. <laughs> um, this is a, this blue thing is a strainer for when I make uh, my glazes. We always have to strain it uh, to get out any chunks and whatnot to make sure um, you're not you're not getting any contamination and of course you know some again texture making things a bit of fur some canvas that kind of thing um, yeah and I've been collecting these because I found out they're not recyclable so this is what I'm um, going to start uh, pouring my clay into is these clamshells from salads and whatnot. Uh, so let's just check here. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Everybody okay? Hi, Christina. <laughs> okay, so what else? Uh, I get, here's the organized chaos comes in. So I've got a whole bunch of materials up here. I really like my oxides. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of success with glazing. And I'm working with some more natural um, kind of things anyway. So I uh, just keep glass is better than plastic, I've learned. So, um, and these are basically ones that basically fit, fit up on the top here. And I do have a few commercial uh, glazes. I don't use them too often. Uh, I do use a clear quite often. And um, a beloved white slip is always good to have on hand. And this one's nice. This is the Sheridan recipe that I got at school. And it's nice because it goes from cone six to cone 10. So it's, it fits on pretty much any body, clay body that I'm working with. And then some extra pickle jars and whatnot for, <laughs> for the glazes to come. Um, what else here? Uh, more metals and sticks and whatnot. Um, uh, for the spiky work that I was doing, I was, I was having to fire these first so that I could 
so they would ha um, have the stiffness to jam through the wet clay. So I've got a whole bunch of those left over. Again, um, these are um, these are uh, clay, uh, glaze tests, and we usually use these um, these nice big plastic bags because, um, and they usually come. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a nice writing area, so you can write the recipe right on there, so that you know what you're working with um, right out of the bag. And if you want to, you know add you know two percent of cobalt or whatever uh, you can know exactly what's in there and replicate it or not um, <laughs> foam 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 um, because I work with sculpture a lot um, I love my foam uh, I got this is an old memory foam from a friend's bed that she gave me uh, this is from <laughs> Uh, another fellow that I work with at TDSB, he gave us uh, some nice big um, foam there. And again, with my rocks and um, weird bricks that I collect, some um, burlap there for texture. There's uh, seashells, I don't know if you can see that back there. Um, and then a whole bunch of clay here. There's another mold uh, that somebody gave me. Uh, Katerina, you probably recognize that one. I think that one came from you. And then these are also um, slated to be hacked up, hopefully. So I'll see how that, uh, how that goes. My half-dead orchid. It hasn't bloomed since, <laughs> since I got it, basically. Um, and then what else here? So again, just playing around with layers. I really like thin, thin uh, fragile things. Here's some more of my work here. I got kind of oceanic looking for a while there. That's the latest one, kind of weird, kind of creepy, kind of, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> and here's some carvings that I did with those um, templates or stencils that I was showing you earlier. So I actually um, entered these into the Canadian 150 show, but they didn't get accepted. But I still, I really enjoy the process of, of removing the clay and uh, in the carving process. This is my, my biggest pot I've ever made <laughs> at school. And uh, this is uh, smoke fired. So it's not as vitrified as, um, like it, it wouldn't be able to hold water. And you can see how the oxygen and, um, and smoke kind of hit it in some areas like this really got a juicy a juicy hit there here's some of my other work this one here too was in the gladstone show uh, and then these are graduate pieces that i made uh, in school this one um, my brother-in-law is a horse trainer at um what's it called rexdale no woodvine um, so he gave me a whole bunch of uh, horseshoe nails, so I also want to play with that a bit more as well. And I think that might be it. You can see that I work with a... a I haven't really um, settled on a clay body that I totally love yet. This is still paper clay that I made in school two, two three years ago. And um, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. What else do you want to see? Mm, here's my lovely balcony. And that's pretty much it. So, um, oh, I wanted to also point out, if you're an artist, I got this table at Uline. I don't know if you can see, it's pretty kind of industrial looking and I love it. It was way better than than this fold them plastic thing especially because i tend to slam around a lot and throw my clay around and on the cheap plastic one it just bounces around where as this one's nice and sturdy and um and doesn't bounce as much and so yeah i think that's about it um i'm not sure what else to tell you <laughs> 
Um, I have, uh, I did start working again um, back in January, right before all the COVID stuff happened. Um, but now uh, I was one of the last on first off. So I'm hoping to get back to that soon now that everything seems to be opening this week. And um, yeah, I'm pretty lucky. I know I'm pretty lucky to be here. I've got a nice skylight up here as well. It does get pretty hot here in the summer because uh, heat rises. This is my friend Kim's work here on the wall. She gave it to me because I said I liked it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm not sure what else to, to tell you. Um, oh, I'll show you, I do have a sketchbook. I am not, uh, as I told you before, I am not a drawer, but you can see that I do take pretty good notes when, and, and do little sketches when I'm, this is a workshop that I went to, I believe. So little diagrams and stuff to remind myself what everything, how things go. Here's some real rough drafts of things I'd like to make. As you can see, they're kind of weird and weird and unusual creatures. Mm. So there you have it. Um, that's my studio. Uh, thank you for coming around and, um, and sharing with me. And uh, I hope to meet you all at uh, an event very soon, one of these days. Um, some of the topics or themes I explore in my work. Um, earlier, the, the more spiky things, I was really looking at uh, seeds and pods and plant reproductive systems and uh, microscopic imagery, um, anemones and uh, all sorts of strange creatures that actually exist. And I was... Um, I was very interested in looking at the way, um, I re I'm really interested at perseverance. So um, I was interested in things that pierce the skin, that are kind of growing where they shouldn't grow and that kind of thing. Um, and so mashing up kind of, um, you know, um, elements of different things together to see what kind of different uh, organisms or creatures I could come up with. Um, yeah, and I'm still very much interested in that. Um, and I, as, of course, did I show you my, uh, my little inspiration wall here? So you can see I, I print off a lot from the, like these are seeds, I don't know. They look like worms, but they're seeds. And these are all kind of strange things that I think that one looks like a, I don't know, like a Venus flytrap or something. So those are the kind of things that I, that I look at. Um, and then, you know, the microscopic stuff as well. And of course, other people's work too. This is an actual heart. Somebody at the, um, at the one of a kind show, I believe. And... Yeah, and then and then that uh, coupled with the um, with the plaster work that I that I'm starting to work on, um, those are the kind of things I'm I'm looking at. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I was a fundraiser before I started doing this. Uh, I've always been kind of crafty. Um, I've always collected stuff like this. Uh, you probably saw with my, my junk drawers there with feathers and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I just, um, uh, what else? Oh, I used to be a fundraiser. I lived in Montreal before I moved to Toronto. I met the love of my life through work. And so that brought me here. And uh, we're still happily together with our little studio dog. And um, yeah, I just got to the point in my early 40s that um, uh, I was kind of tired of being in service of other people. Uh, so I wanted to do something for myself. So that's why I chose um, going to Sheridan. And um, now that I'm out, I actually realized um, what an, um, 
what an isolated uh, job being an artist is. Um, so I did join a guild. I joined Mrs. Selka Potter's Guild because it's very close to me and um, I really like the vibe there. I like the people that go there. And they've also got bigger kilns than I have. I, I only have one kiln and it's quite small. Um, so that's, uh, it's kind of a twofold win-win um, for me uh, that I can fire bigger stuff and also get that contact, human contact that I'm looking for, which I'm realizing now with this isolation that I need more than ever. <laughs> um, and yeah, and, and now that um, I've been uh, kind of working on my own, I've uh, gone out and, and sought work um, that's totally unrelated so that uh, it's not career based. I call it a fluffy job because I don't take anything home with me. I can come home and concentrate on my art when I get home. And that's exactly what I was looking for. So um, I think that's a bit about me. Um, if you have any questions, I'm on Instagram. I know my Instagram doesn't have a whole lot of stuff. I'm still apprehensive about letting that vulnerability out in public like that. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely need to get, uh, get that up and going. Um, my personal one has lots of pictures of my dog and flowers and whatnot, but I really need to get my work up there. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me today. And, um, I hope to meet some of you in the future. Thanks so much.